Welcome to today's interview on Brighton.com. I'm Mike Adams, the founder of Brighton, as you know, a free speech platform. And today we have a first time guest who I think you will find quite fascinating. And he's the author of a book called Revelations, The Hidden Secret Messages and Prophecies of the Blessed Virgin Mary. His name is Xavier Ayral, and he joins us now remotely to talk about his interpretation of what Revelations tells us about what's happening now and where things are going. And it seems very appropriate right now, given events in the world. So welcome, Xavier. It's an honor to have you on today. Thank you for taking the time to join me. Well, hello, and uh, thank you uh, for your kind invitation. Uh, we are we are very honored to have you on, and uh, we appreciate your time and your interpretation. Uh, just since this is the first time that we've had you on, could you give us a little bit of a, of a background? In addition to, to being the author of this book, uh, w what is your background that that gives you this knowledge base that you could write about revelations? Of course. Um, well, I'm a Frenchman. I was born in Normandy. I grew up in Paris, studied with the Jesuits. Um, I worked for approximately seven to eight years with the world-renowned uh, abbot or father René Laurentin, who the Americans used to call him when he was alive, uh, the French, the Marian Jacques Cousteau of Marian Apparition Science. He was the foremost expert by, in the Catholic Church of um, alleged apparition site. Whenever anywhere in the world um, an alleged apparition site uh, was taking place, the local bishop or archbishop immediately called upon him to come to make a theological investigation and a scientific one. To give you a brief, a brief idea, Father René Laurentin, who later became Monsignor before he passed away in 2017, was principally responsible for the approval recognition process of the apparition site of uh, San Nicolas in Argentina, uh, Betania in Venezuela, um, Quibejo in Rwanda, formally approved, thanks in part for, 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 because of Father René Laurentin, Soufanier in Syria. And Father René Laurentin was the foremost defender of the apparition sites uh, in the small village in Bosnia-Herzegovina uh, of um, Medjugorje. Uh, Father Laurentin, what's more, has written a true library of books concerning the Virgin Mary's apparition in uh, the Rue du Bac to St. Catherine Labouré, to Lourdes, to St. Uh, Bernadette Soubirou, whose body is incorrupt in the city of Nevers, and to um, the apparitions of the apparition, singular, in La Salette, in 1846, uh, so he was truly the foremost expert in marine apparition site. And I had the tremendous privilege to work with him on a particular case for about, for about eight years or so. Wow, wait, 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 I, may, may I interrupt, I apologize, but please, just, just for our audience, when you're referring to the apparition sites that, that you're describing yes. here, I, I just wanna make sure everybody's on board here. The, these are places, uh, typically in, in churches, where there are appearances of the Virgin Mary, correct? Or, or, That's correct. So, and sometimes tears from statues, sometimes blood, I, believe, I mean, sometimes physical manifestations, correct? Exactly. Okay, and uh, I, I, again, I apologize for interrupting you. Uh, I just want to make sure because in, in America, you know, we're a very secular society in America. A lot of people may not even be tuned into this, but I lived in South America and I, it was very frequently reported that people would see the Virgin Mary in many different places or, or not, not only in church, but in, in patterns, in ice or water or all kinds of things. You know what I'm saying? There's... Perfectly. Okay. Uh, well, in my country, we had uh, the great privilege, uh, very much like, like Mexico, which had a uh, lady of Guadalupe. But we, had, um, we have a country which has a long history of um, apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary, where miracles, um, countless miracles have taken place, which to this date, science is utterly, utterly incapable to explain. To give you but one example, Lourdes, it's a place where the Virgin appeared to a young shepherd, a shepherd girl, well, not so much shepherd, but she was a peasant girl who did not know even how to write her own name and she discovered an open uh, pool of uh, waters which have healed thousands of people, including, for instance, uh, one of the most famous uh, miracles, because a lot of people are uh, saying people are curing themselves because of self-convincing, um, 
through meditation of all the means. Uh, goodness, this, yet we have such little amount of time and so much <laughs> I, to cover. I know, I know. I to give you an, an example. There was a French flyer in the 1930s, a woman who was atheist. She crashed before the war on the Black Forest and she lost her beauty. She had a huge cavity where her nose used to be. She was barely able to walk. She was certainly not able to fly anymore. And her friends sent her to Lourdes, to the famous pools of Lourdes, which have cured um, unexplainably countless of people, some of whom did not believe in God. So she went there because she was, she had, was tired of hearing her friends pushing her to go there and so on and so forth. She went there and the people, take, uh, the brocardier, the people who helped the sick to go into pools, take pictures before and after of the worst possible cases who go in the waters of pool for a miracle. And this lady came with this huge hole on her face where her nose used to be. She didn't, she didn't believe in any God. She was atheist. Went in the pools, they took a picture of her before, came out with a nose. What? You heard me. And what's more, she was able to walk, converted to Catholicism, and became a flyer once again. This is one example among many others. The visionary, Bernadette Soubirou, from Lourdes, her body, she became later a nun. Her body, to this date, I, I am very happy to inform you, is incorrupt and exposed the way she passed away in her uniform of a nun, still in a glass casket in the city of Nevers. That's one case among many others of incorrupt bodies. The visionary of uh, Fatima, Jacinta, the little girl who passed away of uh, Spanish flu. Uh, her body was exhumed years after she passed away, only to have been found still incorrupt. Wow. And that's one case among many, many others that could come up. The visionary of uh, uh, Catherine Labouret, of, uh, the, where the miraculous medal from La Rue du Bac in Paris comes from. Her body to this day is exposed in the chapel in Paris, in a glass casket in her uniform of the Sister of the Charity, her body doesn't rot. Her so, body is incorrupt. Do you, I'm curious, in, in your book, do you show some, are there some photos available of some of these things that you're describing? They're extremely common. You can check, no, not, not those. I bring all the matters which are considerably more extraordinary. But you can check on the internet, uh, Visionary of Lourdes, Visionary of the Rue du Bac. All those bodies are incorrupt, and they, they are two among a collection of other, wow. and always what's remarkable, and not to, to belittle uh, our brothers, uh, Christians who are not Catholic, but all those miracles happen only to Catholic mystics and saints. Really? No. Only Catholic? Only Catholics. It's remarkable. But, but and the one all. woman was an atheist and then became she Catholic. Yes. I see. She was bitter, as you can imagine. She was a beautiful woman before she crashed, a splendid flyer. When she crashed, her life was over. Yes. But she was pushed by Catholic friends. Go to Lourdes. Go to Lourdes. It will be a vacation. It will change your mind. Even if nothing happens, go. Try to find our Lord there. She was exasperated. She thought all this was nothing more but gibberish and rubbish. But she was so tired of having to argue. She decided to go and perhaps she could read books, try, change her mind. People were looking at her very oddly in the train on her way from Paris to Lourdes. And she went... Peter, beaten and lost. When she came out of the pools, everybody screamed. They took pictures of her and the nose was there. How can one explain right. the growth of a nose in matters of minutes? No, you're talking that's not self tissue that's not regeneration that is beyond, uh, beyond the realm of medicine and science, you know, conventional medicine and conventional science. And in fact, so that's, that's one of my first questions to you then. And, and I know time is limited here. So you're, you're going to have to summarize it, but the, so the conventional world of science would say that, and I'd like you to respond to this, but they would say that when people think they see the Virgin Mary, well, they're just being suggestible. Or when people think they're healed, it's just a placebo effect. But, you know, you're talking about regrowing a nose. That's not a placebo effect, you know? <laughs> I mean, <that's... laughs> you hit the nail right on the head. But look, there are cases when uh, the Virgin appeared and pictures were taken, including pictures of her. I refer you to the apparition of Zeitun, Z-E-I-T-U-N, in Egypt, in the 1960s, where the Virgin appeared above the cupola of a church, a Coptic church, where it, it was said that the Holy Family, after the birth of Christ, uh, went through to go to Egypt to hide from the Jewish persecution. And there, 
before hundreds of thousands of Muslims, of Jews, Christians, agnostics, and atheists, the version appeared in bright light. And people took pictures of her, checked the internet. Today, no one has the excuse of not knowing. Just go and, um, and put on Google Z-E-I-T-U-N-Z-2-1962, -E -I, I believe, when the version uh, appeared there, and they have pictures. Even I even found recently, I think yesterday, for the first time, a video taken at the time of the apparition of the Virgin May. Here we have but, we have one photo here, Our Lady of Zitun well, and Christianity in Egypt. There you go. You see the Virgin Mary, the, the voila, here? exactly. Yes. No one to this day has been able to explain this uh, particular apparition. And hand, tens of thousands of Muslims, Jews, atheists converted to Catholicism now because of it. But that's not the most important thing of all. The most important thing of all is are rather the messages that the Virgin brings forth in those apparition sites, to begin with, probably since we have such little amount of time, to begin with just Fatima. Fatima. The Virgin appear there, first and foremost, like in all of the apparition sites, to bring a same message, nothing new that is not already in the Gospel. Everything is in the Gospel. The same message, nothing new that is not already in the Gospel. Everything is in the Gospel. And when the Catholic Church recognizes an apparition site worthy of belief, they don't say, you have to believe. No. They say it's worthy of belief and not necessary to gain paradise. It's simply, we must leave the Holy uh, Gospels, the Holy Scriptures. That's the cornerstone for the salvation of humanity. And what, that is what the Virgin Mary herself, when she appears, comes to say. She said on, in Fatima, I've come to tell you the same thing I told um, uh, the servants in the little village of Cana 2,000 years ago. Do everything my son tells you. And that is why we Catholics go to the Virgin Mary not to adore her because she's a human being. She's not a goddess. But we go to her because she's man's best intercessor. Like in Cana. Remember that in Cana. Like in Cana. Remember that in Cana, uh, when the servants had no more wine to serve, uh, the Virgin Mary approached her, her son and told her son, they have no more wine. And the virgins and our Lord answered, and what is that to me, mother? My time has not come. It's time for miracles. And yet, we Catholics cannot help but to observe that Jesus Christ's very first miracle ever performed was upon the request of the Blessed Virgin Mary in favor of humanity. She looked at him with a very probably motherly smile and love, a smile probably that Jesus could not resist and made him decide to perform, although it was not his time, to perform his first miracle. That's why we Catholic consider her our mother as well, the way Christ told St. John at the, when he was on the cross. Uh, John, behold your mother, woman, behold your son. We do not believe that Christ was just addressing John, but through John, who was one of the first of the apostles, of the first cardinals, the first princes of the church, he addresses all of us as the Virgin Mary being our adoptive mother and best intercessor, like she showed in Cana. Christ performed the change of water into wine when it was not, as per his own admission, his time, because of the advocation, the... Um, the request of the Blessed Virgin Mary on our behalf. Wow. And that is why we hold her so much importance. We do not venerate her. We do not adore her. We love her as a second mother entrusted to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go back to apparitions. Fatima. Now, listen to this story. It's quite extraordinary. In 1917, in May, to be precise, May the 13th, the Virgin appeared for the first time to th those three little Portuguese shepherd children who didn't know their A's on their B's. The war, and you have to understand the contest, the First World War was in its full content, and still there was no light at the end of the tunnel, none whatsoever. And the European front was nothing more but hell on earth, a sheer butchery between the Allies, German, English, Australians, Allies versus the Germans, sheer butchery. So, Russia had already signed a capitulation with the Kaiser after humiliating defeat. Uh, 
And Russia had become a third world country with vast territories, with an army of Cossacks who could not even stand straight on their horses because they were too drunk most of the time to be so. Russia was not considered a force to be reckoned with in 1970. And yet, the children of the, or rather, the Blessed Virgin Mary told the, Virgin, the children that if humanity did not convert in time, and I'll explain how, but if humanity did not convert in time, a Second World War would start sometimes thereafter, after this one, when there still was no end inside of this First World War. And remember, being a Frenchman, I can tell you what my con compatriots, my countrymen used to call this war. It was called La Der de Der, which was supposed to be the last of the last of wars. Uh -huh. Now, well, the Virgin Mary said, not so fast. If humanity does not convert, I tell you solemnly that there will be a Second World War worse than this one. And Russia, if humanity does not convert, will spread its errors throughout the world. At the time, I submit to you this prophecy was rubbish, unrealistic, completely unrealistic. What happened? Sometimes after the, when the war, First World War finished, in November of 1918, the Treaty of Versailles put Germany on its knees. The, the, we know the story, the history of, of the world. Uh, the Ottoman Empire ceased to exist the way it was. It was divided into different uh, protectorates and so on and so forth. Russia had been taken over by communism and there was, it was still not considered a threat. Not yet. And yet the Virgin Mary announced through Lucia dos Santos, the only remaining living visionary of Fatima, that when they would see uh, um, um, some lights in the sky in Europe, it would be the beginning of the announcement of the tribulation that would lead to the Second World War. And indeed, there was the, um, the, the Knights Arbor Ar Arboreolis that uh, illuminated all of Europe. My grandmother was in Normandy in 1938 when this happened. You could open a journal and read it like if it was in broad daylight, uh -huh. and it happened. And sometimes thereafter, there was the Oslos, the Nazi taking over of Austria. In th September of 1939, Germany invades Poland. And yeah, the church did not start a campaign invoking the faithful to pray rosaries, to fast, to do the confession every first Saturday of the month, the way she asked in 1925 so through Lucia dos Santos. The message were ignored because at the time it was unrealistic, the prophecies. And the children thought that Russia was the name of a lady that did not even understand it was a country. <laughs> really? Yes. So Russia, the Second World War took place, a monstrosity which led up to 50 million victims throughout the globe. Russia became a superpower and it did spread its errors throughout the world, exactly like the Virgin Mary predicted. There was a third secret, which was not released until June of the year 2000, uh, which was... a uh, only revealed, I regret to say, only in part. The second half uh, to this day has been hidden. But thanks to His Eminence Cardinal Ottaviani, I was able to reproduce the second half of the third secret in my book. Notwithstanding, and I know we are making a race against the clock, I just want to bring to your uh, viewers the following um, message. The Virgin Mary is nothing more but a loving mother who with a very loving, imploring voice asks, is asked to echo the message from heaven, which is convert. And now in these times where we are living, to the mess messages of La Salette, where prophecies of this present time, La Fraude, Marie Julie Jahini in Brittany is describing to perfection the war in Eastern Europe and the Middle East. These prophecies are only meant for one thing, it's an admonition of souls. It is to make a comparison. If you were to drive in a motor car, 200 miles per hour, and you do not know there is a wall of cement right about half a mile away from where you are, and the version appears, and she tells you, my children, change your wheel 45 degrees, but you will meet your demise. It's the same thing with these apparitions. Heaven is sending heaven's first emissary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of Christ, simply to get to tell us, if humanity doesn't change and does not convert, there will be a catastrophe that words will not be enough to describe. Conversion, the Virgin asks, principally through the following means. The reading and the leaving of Holy Scriptures, and particularly the Holy Gospels, the teachings of His Son Jesus Christ. The leaving of the Holy Sacraments 
of the Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church, the only Christian church that was founded by Jesus Christ. All the other denominations, with all due respects, and God knows I respect and I admire, I admire them. No, but all the other Christian denominations have been founded by men. Was it that Christ made a mistake when he told on Peter, you are Peter, and on this rock I shall, fi you shall find found my church? I think not. So the Catholic Church is the only church founded by Christ. And the version said that conversion must be done as well through the living of the sacraments of the Holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church, principally holy confession, preferably on every first Saturday of every month, the way she asked the children of Fatima to do so, and to beg not a priest, but God, through a priest, forgiveness, forgiveness from the heart. And then, most importantly, the reception of the Holy uh, Sacrament of the Altar, the Holy Eucharist, believing, knowing that truly it is not a symbol commemorizing the Last Supper of our Lord, no. It is truly the holy body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. How many um, Eucharistic miracles did we have in the past centuries that have given us again and again scientific proof, unexplainable proof that this is so? When they find human fibers uh, of a human heart inside the uh, Eucharistic miracle of Lanciano in Italy, something that is 13th centuries old, sealed by the Pope of the time only opened in 1979 uh, through the orders of his uh, uh, Pope John Paul II, Saint John Paul II. The Virgin Mary is asking us to convert principally through the living of the Holy, of the holy Sacraments, confession, and never to receive holy, uh, the Eucharist in a state of mortal sin. If we suspect, the Virgin said, that we've committed a great wrong, or if we are guilty of mortal sin, the Virgin asks us first to receive confession, uh, and then to receive um, communion. As the teachings of St. Paul teach us, to receive the body of our Lord, we must be worthy, worthy to receive him. Now, I know what some of our uh, oh, oh, oh. Protestant brothers will tell us. Confession? I can ask forgiveness to God directly. I do not need to go through a priest. Let me ask, let me give you another example. But, but, Xavier, hold, hold on one second. I, I apologize oh, to interrupt, God. but uh, I need to help. I need to try to unpack some of what you already said there. Of course. Uh, uh, you've got a lot of information. I want to direct people to your book as well, because that's where they got to find, you know, uh, a, a lot more detail on it. It's called Revelations, uh, the yes. Hidden Secret Messages and Prophecies of the Blessed Virgin Mary. But I, I, I have so many questions for you. One question <laughs> is that, that right now in our time, and I suspect you would agree with this, but humanity has not learned the lessons of World War I or World War II, and we stand on the verge of yet another possible escalation into world war. Do you believe that the apparitions, the, the appearances of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the miracles that accompany some of these events, is this intended to send a very clear message to humanity that yes, your salvation is real, God is real, you have not been abandoned, you do not have to go down the, the path of total destruction of your civilization. You can still choose God and love and salvation if you want to. Is that, is that why these things are continuing to happen? Yes. The Virgin Mary has explained in her many apparitions that the course of history is not engraved in marble. It can change if humanity responds, yes to the invitation that our Lord, that heaven, is sending forth to the Blessed Virgin Mary. History can change. The, remember in Fatima, she said, if man does not return to my son, then, as a consequence of their refusal, or their answering no, then the Second World War would come. Being a, a lover of history, uh, like many men of my generation, we learned how the Germans were that close for not being able to develop the famous Wehrmacht and the French who were occupying in 1936, the Ruhr, were about to send 100,000 troops armed to the teeth of Germany to stop the armament of the newly armed German army. We would have crushed them like this. There was no competition. No, they had no Luftwaffe. They had nothing. Waffen SS was barely existed, barely existed. But because humanity did not respond in kind, uh, because there was no 
uh, the church did not start a campaign, a crusade, shall we say, of holy rosaries, the prayers of the holy rosaries, of communion, of confession, of reading the scriptures, of, of asking everyone to pray for peace so that these events do not come. The events have taken place and they were predicted to a precision which no one can discuss today. What's more, what gives enormous credibility uh, to the apparitions of Fatima is not just the fact that one of the seers' body was incorrupt, was not that the prophecies happened exactly as they were foretold, but it was also that in front of 70,000 witnesses, most of them were socialists, communists, Freemasons, non-believers, before those non-believers, agnostic and atheist, there was on October 13th, 1917, the miracle of the sun. Witnessed by these people, including a, um, a newspaper that was renowned to be a socialist, uh, led and managed by the Freemasons, who could not be more anti-Catholic if you paid them. And yet, they reported, indeed, that there was such a thing as the miracle of the sun that led people to completely convert, and which finally led 13 years later the Catholic Church to declare Fatima as being worthy of, of, uh, of belief. So these, and I know how it seems, we were talking about confession, the importance of confession, the Catholic Church. To believe that the Catholic Church is not valid, first of all, it's the oldest Christian church ever created, ever in existence. Second of all, what gives it credibility is that Christ founded it on Peter being the first Catholic Pope. Apostolic means from Peter all the way to every single Pope, all the way to the one that is today leading the Catholic Church. So was it that Christ made a mistake? He could not foresee the future. Of course he could. He knew very well what was going to happen. All the other Catholic Church rebelled against the Catholic Church. And Christ and God, who the Blessed Virgin Mary has come to tell us, one of the tactics of the enemy of God, Satan, is to make man believe that he does not exist. Right. And to make man believe that what is good is evil and what is evil is good. Yes. That is exactly what the devil is today trying to do. I ask another question. Why is it that it is only Catholics, Orthodox and Copt um, churchmen that are able to perform successfully exorcism? I was going to ask you this very question, actually. Uh, well, there is a reason for that. They have the authority given to them by Christ, through Peter, the first pope, and Peter, through the cardinals arch and archbishop, bishops, and priests. That is why. Why is it that the devil, when he's being exorcised, cannot stand a prayer in Latin? He cannot. He cannot tolerate it. Or the name of Jesus, or the Virgin Mary. Why? Ask yourself that question. Again, I'm, I'm going so quickly, and I apologize, especially with my ghastly french accent it mm, makes myself no I know we it, we love your french accent we we, we <laughs> appreciate everything that you're saying here but but let me interject and, and ask this question uh, because sure. as i understand it every catholic archdiocese has to this day uh, at least access to an exorcist uh priest who is able to carry out uh yes. such tasks and at the last time i looked at this uh there was actually a very high demand for exorcisms to take place which you know brings up the idea that that satanism and satanic possession are uh really spreading and and infecting you know far far more people more people need help than ever before in human history now granted the population is larger now as well but in your understanding if you're able to speak on this is it true that the the number of exorcisms that are being performed by Catholic priests continues to increase? Alarmingly so. Alarmingly so. That is why, but uh, Father Laurentin, uh, the foremost expert in my apparitions I mentioned, was also an exorcist. Really? And he used to say one thing uh, to me when I used to be with, with him or when I worked with him. He used to say that uh, the devil is like an enraged, barking and threatening dog, enchained against uh, a pole that cannot be moved. Uh -huh. He can only bite to those who approach it. So that is why the Catholic Church, and or rather I should say heaven, most of all, is sending more and more apparition sites since the, since the end of the 19th century, the 1850s, all the way to now. There are some recent ones today that are absolutely extraordinary. Uh -huh. To call man, first of all, not to lose your head, to remain calm, 
and most of all, to place yourself at the feet of the cross in complete trust. Do not be alarmed. Any emotion that makes you, that gives you anxiety, anxiousness, is inspired not by God, but by his enemy. Mm -hmm. On mm -hmm. one instance, if Marie Julie Jeannie, our Lord even said to her, all those souls who abandon themselves completely and unconditionally to me force my hand to protect them. There are also some protections for what is to come. The prophecies are shocking. But the Virgin, or rather, I should not say the Virgin Mary, heaven, through heaven's first messenger, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who merely re echoes what she's been told to repeat because she's our mother, and with an imploring, loving voice, she gives us also the tools not only to convert here and here, but also as well how to protect this, our skin, our lives, through sacramentals, particularly blessed water, exercised salt, exercised water, to wear upon yourself always a crucifix with a corpus, the brown scapula. The version appeared in 1215 to a British and English monk, St. Simon Stock, with a child Jesus and the scapula of Mont Carmel on her arm, saying, and this is one of our greatest Catholic treasures, saying, all those who, as an act of faith and trust in my son Jesus Christ, will wear at the moment of their death the brass scapula, however evil they've committed, will never suffer the fires of hell. It's a great treasure, and it must be blessed by a Catholic priest and placed the first time upon you by a Catholic priest. Really? It does not mean that every person who wears it at the moment of death will go to heaven. According to the book of Ockaby, uh, there are three states of existence after death. Of course, there's heaven. Of course, we know about hell. There is also purgatory. All the souls of purgatory, the Virgin told us, are blessed souls, for they decide on their own to go there, as they don't deem themselves worthy to go to heaven yet. It's a purification period of time for which the souls who have committed sins need to wash their sins away to be worthy to enter heaven. They will, no one will stay in purgatory forever, unlike hell and unlike heaven. So all the souls who go to purgatory, and there are different levels, according to the Catholic Church, will one day reach heaven. So they go there happy, because they know, they know they've, saved, they've been saved. Hmm. But the message from heaven, the principal message is this. Trust and abandon yourself unconditionally, lovingly with all your trust at the feet of the cross to God through Jesus Christ. Go and leave the holy sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church. That's the key to your salvation. Repent. Repent with all your heart through, the, the, through confession. And I know what many Protestants, our brothers, will say, I do not need to go through a priest to have my sins washed away. I can go straight to heaven. I can... Ask forgiveness straight to Jesus Christ, to God. I can do that. Again, there was one visionary who came with a brilliant comparison. And I'll be br very brief. I promise I'm very long-winded, but I'm making race against the clock. <laughs> <laughs> but imagine this. <laughs> imagine you're top of a, on, on board of a cruiser, a cruise ship, yes? And you're miles and miles away from the coast. Blast! And all of a sudden, you have the appendicitis. Now, on board, you have only one doctor. And he's a womanizer, uh, somewhat of a drinker. He goes through all sorts of vices. And worst of all, he's English. I'm a Frenchman, so I had to resist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, just to put a little bit of a uh, joyous uh, mood, no? So let's go back to being uh, serious. So all of a sudden, there you are. You have the appendicitis and you need an operation pronto. You cannot wait for a helicopter to come and pick you up. It needs to be done immediately. The question I ask is this. Will you, because this man is a worse sinner than you are, refuse to go to him, although he has the power, and trust it to him by the societies of doctors, to save your life? Or would you, because you think you're a better Christian than he, only pray to God and not go to him, and, and refuse to go to him, because although he has the power to do so, and in a way his presence there is a blessing from God, what would you do? I tell you, I would myself convince myself that this doctor is a Frenchman, <laughs> and I would avoid <laughs> thinking of all the other sins he's committed, and would go. A priest does not forgive you. God, through Peter, 
And through Peter, through this priest, uh -huh. gives you the final absolution and cleanses you. It's, I tell you, it's very difficult to go to another man and open your dirty laundry and ask forgiveness to God through him. It's a tremendous penance. But it's very healthy. It well, humiliates you, and humility is a virtue. Thank you for that that explanation. I'm I'm <laughs> learning a lot here uh, already about the Roman Catholicism as well. This is this is fascinating, and uh, I have interviewed people before uh, who well well one person, I think his name was uh, Ramiro, who who worked in the L.A. County jails as a guard, and he he came to find that the vast majority of the prisoners there were. Uh, satanically infested and he developed a simple test which is that he would offer them uh, like cigarettes or, or food snacks or something if they could say the name Jesus Christ out loud and the ones who were demonically infested could not say Jesus it, it hurt them too much because yes. uh, of the demonic entity so um, and there are many other examples of this I know you have many probably in your book, but I, I need to ask you just in the interest of time, mm -hmm. in terms of application to what's happening today uh, in, in the Middle East, we, we stand on the verge of events that may escalate into another world war. I mean, we're seeing all the forces, many of them named in the Bible, such as Russia and Iran and Israel and, and so on. And China. Uh, uh, yeah. And even China, uh, many, ships and weapons converging and missiles and nuclear capabilities bombings are happening right now people are dying every day as we record this people are dying and there is there is terror there is rage you know all these things that mix together what do you believe ha has been given to us in terms of messages or revelations through your research that you think may apply to, if anything, to what's happening in the Middle East right now? Is there, is there a message of hope that can be found? Or what do you think? Yes. Um, in the 1880s, there was a French stigmatist a lady, a woman from Brittany, who announced that the day will come when in the Middle East, there would be tensions between the Anglo-Saxons uh, joined with the Israelis and against the Persians, you know, the Persia did not, ex Iran did not exist then, so she called them Persia, but Persia is Iran. This is happening today. Now, according to this prophecy, there will be a third world war. But prophecy can be changed, like in Nineveh, in the Bible. It's just, um, it is not a sword of Damocles that is hanging about our necks, about to cut our heads. The messages of Virgin Mary are a warning, or rather, of not the message of the Virgin Mary, but through the Virgin Mary. It's a warning that these events uh, will happen unless we totally and completely turn to God, eliminate the mediocrities of our lives, be, stop being selfish, stop living in a society that has replaced God with the self-assuredness that our technology or that our wisdom goes above that of God. Yes. The rules of God, the Ten Commandments, the gospel taught by our Lord Jesus Christ, do not change with time or with uh, the right. fashions of the time. Um, it is an absolute value that remains as absolute as two and two will always be four. It will not change because some people think that four is not um, matching their method of living. Christ has come and was very clear. Everything is in the gospels, in the Holy Scriptures. What is Good is inspired by God. What is evil, with a lot of astuteness and skillful, skillfulness, the devil makes believe that what is evil, what is selfish, what is bad, is in fact acceptable. If today you say, no, 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 uh, this is indeed wrong, this is not what our Lord teaches you, you will be called a neo-Nazi, or oh, a fascist, an intolerant neo-Nazi, what's more. My family, joined General de Gaulle in 1940 when the Nazis marched through Paris. We refused the idea of armistice, which Marshal Pétain signed with the Germans. My family for the Germans, the Nazis, the fascists, although we were never socialist or communist. 
So those Catholics that are coming forth today because of all the multiple Marian apparition sites around the world, and even our Lord, not just the Virgin Mary, our Lord appeared to Sister Faustina in Krakow just before the Second World War to warn also of the upcoming Second World War. And he came under the title of uh, our Lord of Mercy. That's why we pray now the chapter of Divine Mercy. You know? And there are some prophecies that concern the United States that um, through a particular um, monk, um, Father from Quebec, Father Michel Rodrigue, who said that the United States, in a way, although will be hit, will be protected because this country prays the chaplet of divine mercy. So I invite all but, of this you can find on the internet. Okay, look, the internet. that's fascinating. And uh, look, allow me to point out that both Israel and the United States have become, you know, very much secular societies that the, I would say the vast majority of the populations in the United States in particular, and but Israel as well, uh, they are not familiar with any teachings of Christ. They, I'm not sure you could say they reject them. Many, many do reject them, but very few, relatively few today uh, go to church. Uh, relatively few have a Bible, even own one, much less read it or, or, or pray to Christ. Um, I, I interviewed uh, Brad Cummings the other day, who's a publisher of the Founders Bible, and he said, you know, people forget that we actually have to do the prayer. It, you know, you can't just talk about, like, yeah, we should all pray. Yeah, we all agree. Everybody nodding. Everybody should pray. But then nobody prays. You know, it's like we actually have to do the prayer in order to to ask God to intervene in ways that that can assist us. And yet we we live in nations now. You live in in the United States as well where there is a widespread rejection of the teachings of, of not just the Catholic Church, but the teachings of, of any denomination of Christianity or Catholicism or even Judaism. What do you make of that? I, mean, why, why, I guess the bigger question is, why would God save a nation that has rejected him? There's a question for you. Well, my answer for you is very simple. Yet you are inviting me here today for your viewers to hear these words. Yes. Listen to this. I do not believe for one moment that God leaves things to chances, that he rolls the dice and let people what listen. Oh, it was a coincidence. That's rubbish. I do believe sincerely, my faith teaches me that much at least, that all the people who are watching your show now or in the future, since this is pre-recorded, or listen to this word, or these words rather, will be touched. They will be they are facing into uh, a curiosity which will lead them to make a choice to say or to answer to this invitation from heaven to convert, to erase all the evil in your lives, the mediocrities, to convert, to return to God, to ask him to save you and your family, you will be invited to say yes or no. With this information that I'm just giving you, which is just the top of the iceberg, if you knew what, what else I have in store, you'd be shocked. But for this is enough to start. And for those who have here heard these particular messages, it's enough for them to take a leap of conscience, to be aware that indeed there is an accent of authenticity, of truth in these particular messages, of correction, of hope. And that is the message of heaven through these particular messages of the Virgin Mary. He gives hope for a better future and most of all for the salvation of your soul, for there is something considerably worse than the death on this earth. Oh, yes. Everyone, everyone will die. It's a question of time, natural life, disease, natural death. God knows what, but it's unavoidable. It's not how you die that matters. It's how you live. And the Virgin Mary is bringing forth a roadmap, a map of kindness, of mercy, of tolerance, and of adoration of her son, Jesus Christ. That's all she's come for. Those to, to do exactly as she's in Cana, do everything my son tells you. I'm really glad you you listed off some of those properties, you know, mercy and and tolerance and healing and so on. Um and and yet, you know, just for for me personally, over the over the past couple of weeks, I've I've found myself on the receiving end of uh, a, a lot of hatred for calling for mercy for you know humanitarian stance and and you know de-escalation let's say um because the, the way i see it is that 
all of us are God's children. All human beings on this earth are God's children. And anytime humans are killing each other for any reason, it, God cries, you know, it, it, God suffers. We should not be killing each other. And yet we find ourselves, especially with the situation in the Middle East, but there are many other examples throughout history, like World War II, like you mentioned, where it is so easy for humanity to be swept into rage. Easy, right? It's easy to provoke rage. It's easy to provoke violence as a reaction. It's easy to call for war. It takes discipline to call for peace. It takes a dedication to a process of honoring life and, and honoring the human experience and honoring the ending of suffering, if that's even possible, in order to, to call for peace. How, how do we ultimately win this? How, with God on our side, how do we beat the satanic influences that can take all the shortcuts to cause rage and violence and bombings or killings or whatever? It seems like it's easy, so easy for them to win, doesn't it? You're quite right. Well, the messages that the version brings forth uh, echo an orbit around the notion of mercy. Christ said him himself, and was, that is what the Virgin is echoing today in her messages. Pray for your enemies. Try to hold all grudges away. And remember, the very first soul to have ever, ever entered heaven, even before the Virgin Mary, even before St. Joseph, um, was the least of men and non-Christian. Uh, how should I say? A, a criminal, by his own admission, a man who deserved to die on the cross it was the man who was on, on Christ's right hand when he was crucified. He said before he died, Jesus, remember me before you enter into your kingdom. That was the very first human being to have ever entered heaven. Christ said to him, in truth, in truth, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. He was not a Christian. He was the least, the most despicable, the most the great criminal by his own admission. That is a message of hope that heaven is sending all of you. You could not have possibly committed any sins, however sordid or ghastly, that, can, that cannot be forgiven. But God will forgive those who ask forgiveness. And yes, God is a God of mercy. But do remember, the version told us that God is also a God of justice. Yes. For you, for you to be forgiven, you have to ask, repent with all your heart to the church that her son founded through St. Peter, for indeed this Catholic Church has been given the power to crush the devil. We see it every day through the countless exorcism around the planet. So that is the message that heaven is doing. But most of all, keep a cool head. Mm -hmm. Even if there is a third world war, this conflict will degenerate unless man turns to God. And right now there is only ever such a small minority of people who listen to us. But the Virgin Mary always asks, Keep a cold head. Place your trust totally at the feet of the cross. Trust into God, into the church that he founded for Peter, and pray, fast, confess, and receive Holy Communion, believing that it is not a symbol, but truly God, through the, spe the species of the Eucharist, of the bread, and of the wine. Those are the keys of salvation, but in peace, in calmness, cold-headedness, and chase from you, not just the mediocrities, but all hatred or spirit of vengeance. Pray for those who commit errors, who think they are right and they are wrong. For those who are evil, pray for their conversions. That is the message wow. of the Virgin Mary in her apparitions. That's very powerful. And that's very necessary in, in our time. You know, so much is at stake right now, and uh, including our, our eternal souls. <laughs> I mean, that's that is the ultimate thing that is at stake. But I, what I love about what you said is that all that is necessary is that we ask. You know, we, we ask for forgiveness. We ask for protection. We even pray for our enemies, as, as you just relayed. And those are things that every single person can do in a world where people feel helpless. What can we do against, you know, aircraft carriers or bombs or, or guns? Well, guess what? Every single person can ask without exception. And that, that's very profound. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. You've been very kind. Well, this, this has been 
truly fascinating. I can't even believe how much time has, has <laughs> gone. I mean, it, the, I, I, I think uh, I could talk with you for hours and, and we're going to have to do more, obviously. Uh, I have so yes, many more. If, yeah, if you're, if you're open to it, uh, I would love to discuss with you more, uh, especially also about uh, exorcisms and possession, if that's a topic you're open. Or, can we talk about that in another interview? Whatever you like. Okay, and then and then more of the apparitions. Uh, I would really like to know what uh, more specific examples of what what people are experiencing and seeing, and some of the miracles that are occurring, and so on. I I'm really fascinated by this, and I think our audience is as well. And I think they're inspired by it. I um, I ask for everyone in your show uh, to pray for you and for your family. Um, this gentleman um, is a man who is taking a great deal upon his shoulder. He is exposing himself to criticism. You cannot make everyone happy, but uh, pray for him. I do ask for his family, for all his team, technical and otherwise. And uh, if I may be so bold, I ask you in all sincerity, uh, please to pray for me and for my family as well, so that the will of God uh, prevails over that of man. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, please, those of you watching, join join us all in both of those prayers. We will pray for you, Xavier, as well, and your family. And I, I do know as a fact that I would not be here today if it were not for God's protection. And uh, perhaps in a future episode, I, I can share with you specific examples where my life would have ended without, without God's protection. So uh, I, live, I live that protection every single day. And that's why I feel uh, a duty to keep doing this and, you know, to do what I do here and share, share this information and try to reach people with a message like what you're doing. So let me mention your book one more time, Revelations. It's a, it's a paperback. It's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble and other, other outlets. And le let me just spell your name, Xavier, for our audience. Uh, your last name is Aral, A-Y-R-A-L. And Xavier, X A V I E R, and that's how people can find you. Is there any anything else you want to offer? How people can find your work or your books? No. The important thing about this book is simply it uh, has for the for ambition to echo messages which, on some instances, have been purposely hidden by the Catholic Church because the content concerning clergy, concerning the future of the Church, and concerning the political regime of some countries was not con convenient. So these proposals to bring forth to the faithful and to men of goodwill uh, a message which was meant for them in the first place. And as I said, that was the main concern. And I finish simply by saying this. When I first started this book and when all this invitation on podcast came, I had a serious uh, uh, period of time when I was doubting whether I should continue or not. Oh, really? Because when you, you should know of all people, working on the public media, you expose yourself yes. and your family to dangers, to criticism, to hatred. Yes. People who do not accept. So I had to have a long conversation with my wife before starting this campaign. And my wife told me, look, Xavier, we've been blessed with two wonderful children. Uh, we, we are with one another. We have a steady marriage. It's a way for me at the end to say merci to God. I couldn't find a better way uh, for having the two uh, little the monsters that are my children and um, for all the blessings that I've received uh, along my life. I simply call all the, all the faithful Christians and even non-Christians to consider this um, show as something not um, coincidental, but truly des designed for you to hear this message. You are being given a choice. And with this information, which is only, as I said, the top of the iceberg, comes a tremendous responsibility. And again, is that to say, I accept or I do not? And, and it's, I, I think it's so important also for non-believers who are listening and maybe learning about this to recognize that God is real. Miracles are real. And frankly, the, the creator of our universe can can bend the rules of the cosmos at any time at, at his will, like regenerating a nose as that woman found out in the pools. Right. I mean, 
the, the body can heal itself, but not that fast. Well, God can speed up that time, right? God can generate, God created everything. Surely he can create a nose, <laughs> right? I mean, Definitely. but the, there, is yes. a, there is a comment I'd like to share you, with you. Yes, you please. tell me what you think. But you, the, the part is you have to tell me what your opinion as well. I'm interested. Okay. But uh, this priest, uh, this Catholic told me, well, there is a lot of sensationalism in all these things. I mean, really, we don't need so much sensationalism uh, for us to believe in the in our faith. And I answered, well, Father, maybe you you do not, but what's more sensationalistic than God sending his son to be born of a virgin woman, <laughs> or for him to walk on water, right. or for him to make the, de the dead rise and right. be crucified with blessing and rising of the third day? What do you think? What is your opinion? Oh, I completely agree with you. I mean... It, th that that is God saying, "Look, humanity, we can raise the dead, we can we can resurrect, we can perform miracles. We are not tied to, you know, the 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 normal laws of gravity and whatever else. It's just it's yeah. I I, I think reality is sensational to anybody who's paying attention, and I think a lot of what happens in our society today is to turn people into sleepwalking zombies." who don't notice the miracles that are occurring around them every day. You know, I, I walk in nature every day and I see miracles in nature constantly, all the time. I, I had a pet goat. I walk with my goats every day and one of my pet goats would respond to her name. Every time I call her name, she turns around and speaks back to me. And I tell people that and they say, that's not possible. Goats don't respond to their names. Uh, well, my goat does actually and every seed is a miracle every seed you know every every new tree that appears on the ground from from seemingly nothing is a miracle i see i see miracles all over the place so like when when you describe these things they're to me they're not outlandish they are part of the fabric of miracles in which we swim every single day and to those who can't see the miracles i say why live blinded I don't understand that, but that's just, that's my take. I agree. It's a, it's lovely. It's a lovely thought. Yes. So, um, do consider truly this, um, not my words, but rather those of heaven and for you, there is no such thing as coincidence. And yes. truly, uh, when you, I first read or heard of these messages, the very first thing I did was to say thank you to God because, um, uh, it helps you to, see yourself in the light of truth and it, it inspires you to want to do away as i mentioned a few moments earlier with the mediocrity of yes. your everyday life that's right and to keep calm and to develop your faith by not losing your calmness and not worrying or being so anxious <laughs> right. love it well well said xavier the, it's been a pleasure and uh, i don't know how you could ever receive any threats you're, you're such a joyful person i mean you're you have such a positive demeanor with a very positive message for all of us so thank you for sharing that with us oh, you're back. and you're welcome yeah. back we'll talk again sometime in the future and i look forward to that very much likewise you've been very kind and thank you to your auditors as well okay thank you and god bless you we you appreciate too. you all right folks that was xavier a uh just Wow, what an amazing human being. Just I uh, feel honored to have had him on. And uh, check out his book again. It's called Revelations. There's a powerful message. If you, if you have found this interview, there's a reason. There's a reason. God wants you to hear this message for, for whatever reason. I don't know the reason, but God works through all of us to bring this to you and to connect us in ways that maybe we can't yet understand, but will become clear as time moves forward. So thank you for watching today. I'm Mike Adams, the founder of Brighteon.com. And uh, God bless you all. Take care.